Welcome. Today we're going to talk about PowerShell and this is more of a beginner's guide than an intermediate or advanced one. First of all, I want to point out that I'm using Visual Studio Code, although you could use uh, PowerShell ISE as your IDE interface and ultimately get the same results as I have now. The only difference between the two is that this one happens to be my preferred choice given that I can use it for plugins for other types of coding interfaces such as Docker, um, Batch and other, let's say, numerous plugins. And if you haven't already tried it, I really do recommend that you go out and give Visual Studio Code a try. With that said, let's look at, at some basic information around PowerShell. As an example, we're going to start with variables. So as an example, a variable in PowerShell is often declared by having a dollar sign in front of it. So we have a value and then an equal and our declared value in this case being a one. So if I run the script, you'll see below that I get an output from my console window of one. Now we can do a few things with values. As an example, I can increase the length of the value and I can get the output and say that it's going to be exactly the same. So I can still see that these numbers match. Now, values can be also got from other keys. So it's not entirely limited to a static field. It can be a string and an input onto the PowerShell script itself, although we'll come on to those kind of things later. The other thing I can do with my variable is I can turn around and say, you know what, I'm going to do a count. And if I run that, it's going to tell me that I've got one, because I've only got one variable, even though I have multiple numbers in there, it still only counts as one variable. But as an example, if I put in a second variable, let's say four, five, six, and do a count again, I now have two variables because they're separated out. So this has gone from being a regular static single variable to effectively what they call an array. Equally, I could also do length. And length will tell me how much it is. So in this case, it's two. So again, I'm getting a number two because I have two in my array. And if I do, I can also see three. So I can now see this has gone back to a single value, so it's no longer an array, and consequently I can see the number of characters. So let's say I add some text in there, I do a run again, and I can see the number has increased. So this is one of the many options that you can do. You also have some lists, some powers, some characters. We're not going to go into all the different types, but you can see that there is a large number of functions you can do. So next on our list is let's populate a value with other information. So in this case, we're going to create a variable. Our variable is going to equal a command. And in this case, the command is get child objects. And we're going to say get child objects from our logs folder. And if I quickly run that, you can see the output down here. We have all of the files contained within that child folder. So here's the initial output, and then we have all these files. Now, that is a single directory structure. So as an example, if I'm using child objects and I want to get multiple folders, I use a dash recurring, and this would then get all of the subsequent folders as well. And you can see I didn't have to use the right output. I can also use just the variable itself to get the output to the console. And this can be quite useful if you're writing code and you want to see what the contents of the variable is without having to do the whole right output and then see what it is. You can actually just select that particular part, run it, and get the output. Next on our list for each. Now, for each is a way of saying that we have a variable or multiple variables in this case, and we want to run through it. So basically, it's really good if you have lists and arrays. So here, I've got an array called veg, or vag in this case. 
uh, which consists of peas, beans, and potatoes. And for each one of those, I'm going to assign it a another variable. And that variable is going to exist in the array. So basically, to translate this back, for every one object in my original variable, I am going to give it this one character. And this one character I can do multiple things with. In this case, I'm just going to output it to command line. So if I go ahead and run this, you can see I get one, two, three outputs because I have one, two, three items. Now you could put all kinds of conditions and other things into this to build a more detailed output. As an example, I could have this populated with get child items from a folder and then for each child item have a sequence of events or actions that I want to run. Last but not least, we also have the else function and the if function. Now here we have a really good example. The if function in this case is going to get a system variable. So not all variables are created by you. Some exist by default as part of the operating system. One of them in this case is PowerShell version table. And within that there is a subset of information. In this case there's a PS version and there's a measure. So this gives me a output that if I was to just run this, and I believe I can select this and just run it. Ah, oh, no, it's, it's going to give me the whole result. Uh, but just as an example, this would give me an output and tell me that my current version of PowerShell, and I happen to know what it is because I have it down here, which is 5.1. So I have then a if equal or if greater than if there are plenty of options. In this case, I've chosen the uh, greater or equal to 6. Now, I know that my value is 5.1, so of course it's not equal. So the first output, which in this case is uh, not equal to or greater than, it would tell me this. So greater or equal to 6, you're running an old version. Else run, you're running a current version. So I'm being told that you ran a current version. So if I put greater than, I would get this. So if it was greater than 6, I would get this output. So what if I put uh, less or equal than and put 4? Well, I'm still running a current version because I'm lower than or higher than 5. So if I put, let's say, 5, I still get it because I know I've got 5.1. But in this case, 5 is the major release, so we're not counting the dots. So the output is you are running an old version because it's now equal to the number that I am on. And this can be used in many cases to determine or in the last case, let's say I can put uh, equal. So if it equals 5, and again run it, you're running an old version. And if I put any other number there, so let's say 3, and I run it, you have a current version because the output is not equal to, so the first value is not going to run. So it will go to the else in this case, and the else says, well, we're running the current version. And that's the end of this tutorial for now. I hope you enjoyed it.